Hello again. This is another special video in which we will review the most important themes and events of chapters 59 through 61 of the second part of Don Quixote de la Mancha. So let's review. Chapter 59 exhibits Cervantes' most famous metatextual moment. This is even stranger than the search for the lost manuscript in chapter 9 of part 1, or the idea that Carrasco or the Duke and Duchess have read part 1. Don Quixote now meets men who are reading yet another version of his novel. Cervantes may be annoyed, but he owes Avellaneda a debt of gratitude. If not for Avellaneda, would Cervantes have conceived of this hyper self-reflection which makes Don Quixote such a unique and monumental text? Think about it. Cervantes has a fictional character, Don Quixote, renounce his intention to visit Baragotha as a means of proving that, in reality, he is not the same as another fictional Don Quixote. As another sign that things are falling apart, chapter 60 offers a mind-boggling political allegory. If Barataria was complicated, what are we to make of the noble yet vicious bandit Roque Guinart? Is he an image of what happens when there's no rule of law? Or is he a subtle metaphor for what the rule of law actually is. It's an amazing prelude to Barcelona, and Cervantes was clearly fascinated by the factional anarchical violence of Catalonian politics around 1600. There's also something symbolic about the traveling party robbed by Roque. Headed to Rome, Sicily, and Naples, that is the eastern frontier of the Spanish Empire, they represent a religious, military, and political power structure. More amazing, within this political maze, Cervantes lodges the tight tragedy of Claudia Jerónima and Don Vicente Torrellas. Perhaps Cervantes complicates his own feminism here. Does Claudia Jerónima avenge the novel's other mistreated women, Marcela, Dorotea, or Camila? Or does she represent the fact that women are just as capable of irrational brutality as men? Guns equalize us, but they don't necessarily make us better human beings. Finally, these textual, political, and sexual confusions were all previewed by Sancho's violent reaction to his master's attempt to whip him against his will. It's a major turning point in the relationship between Hidalgo and Squire. Sancho tosses aside the organic obligations of feudalism and claims his natural right to defend himself. Don Quixote is shocked and melancholic. Welcome to the modern fallen world of Don Quixote Part II. Roque's paranoid lifestyle, the Duke and Duchess's pettiness, and our Hidalgo's helplessness all signal that nobility no longer connotes honor and power, and cosmopolitan Barcelona, the only urban setting in the entire novel, is symbolic of the dissolution of the chivalric ideal. Even the date, six months before Christmas, suggests that Cervantes has brought us to the polar opposite of Don Quixote's idealistic fantasy. That's all for our review of chapter 59 through 61 of the second part of the novel. Keep reading. The story only gets better in the coming chapters.